We are, of course, here for more Asian footy talk on the Michael Talks Football Channel. And, of course, we are joined by Deadball TV and Jack one more time. We're probably going to pe keep doing this until the walk-up starts, people, because you guys like this duo. We're like Chris Bosch and, well, the rest of the Toronto Raptors, or you could say LeBron <laughs> James and Dwayne Wade, or whatever NBA duo you want to name. Who is a big winner? Who is a big loser? And which nation is in desperation right now? It's only been four games, but some teams are in desperation. And who is joining Chile, basically applying for some beach holiday next summer already? So we're going to go start off with Group A, where Iran and Uzbekistan, damn. I actually didn't realize this. They already got a six-point lead. Holy crap. Really what we're seeing with Group A is barring a historic fumble from the Iranians or the Uzbeks, which they fumbled before, then this group is kind of, at least the automatic spots, done and dusted. But I think, dude, three and four? There is, swear to God, we could have Kyrgyzstan and Korea in third and fourth when we're, when we're done. Mm -hmm. Like that part of the group is fascinating and it's wide open. But is anybody catching the Uzbeks? I mean, nobody's catching the Iranians. But could they catch the Uzbeks? I just don't see them dropping enough points to fall to third. I really don't. My biggest takeaway sort of from this group is that Uzbekistan have 10 points, but they haven't looked good. I think they've been really fortunate. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think they played really good football. I think the second half against UAE was better. But then again, they have faced 10 men on three out of the four games. They've also had three of the four games at home. And we know they're a very good home side. So let's see when they go away to Iran, go away to Qatar and see how they do. But I don't know. Are you kind of worried with Uzbekistan? I know it doesn't matter how they play to qualify to the World Cup. But it doesn't seem like the vibes are right right now. I'm glad you asked that because I tweeted this and I want to ask you. I'm throw a question back at the host. Is Uzbekistan the luckiest team in AFC qualifying so far? If you guys disagree in the comments, comment the other team. But I think it's Uzbekistan. I would tend to agree with that. There's because they played three games, 10 men. I don't think they played their best football. Defensively, I have no worries. But I just look at like the attacking talent they have from Masharipov, Urunov, Vais Vaisulayev. Uh, Smordov. I'm like, you guys can't score more than one goal. One goal in this window. And it was a penalty. I mean, so you're going to score all your goals against Kyrgyzstan and that's it. Okay, cool. I expect a little bit better from Uzbekistan, but this will all be forgotten if they qualify to the World Cup. But if they play bad and don't qualify, then it's going to look even worse in my opinion. And then Iran, I mean, they destroyed Qatar. And I think you called it as well. You said that Iran would destroy them. I, I kind of... Iran are such a weird team. Because they show you moments of like good, and then they show you moments of bad, and then they show you moments mm -hmm. of, oh, we've been here before. We, we know this. We've been to the club before. We've gotten the VIP ticket to the World Cup. And then after, as soon as they conceded that goal against Qatar, I was like, oh, no, we might, we might be seeing a, an interesting <laughs> here game here. And <laughs> here we go again. And then they said, okay, cool. We're going to yeah. give them an absolute massive beatdown and 4-1. And Osmond, I mean, he's not worried about horses anymore. He might actually be a footballer again. And uh, Mohebi, yeah. it's good to see that Mohebi is in the starting lineup. That's what I'm surprised about. But Iran, they're just so experienced in this sort of phase of walk-up qualifiers. Yeah, I agree. And if you look at Iran and Uzbekistan, they are the top two teams for a reason. And they're the most complete teams in this group. Like, if you look at the UAE, bro, like, that defense is just, really in the midfield, it's just shambolic. They got a solid goalkeeper and some good wingers. And that's pretty much it. Qatar... I mean, we know this, bro. Two-man duo. If it's not Akram Afif, who I thought was getting clowned way too hard by the Iranians after the game, he should have had two assists in this match. It's not his fault that nobody can put the ball in the back of the net. Like, he still had the most chances created in the game playing for that finished national team. So y'all got to stop disrespecting Afif like that. He's still balled out. But if it's not him and Amos Ali, who, Lucas Mendez? They're not scary outside of that. And then Kyrgyz Republic, I'm going to be honest, bro. They've had a couple of players that have impressed me. They've had a couple of attackers that I think have a little more sauce than I gave oh, them credit Kojo. for during my predictions. Kojo, no, yeah, I think his name is like Ali Luzhov. And then North Korea, bro, their goalkeeper is just awful. Like, they should have two wins. <laughs> Matt, they should Matt have two wins. The, the man was wearing the pants and it was still awful. <laughs> Bro, it was so bad. Like, I, I think Uzbekistan are the luckiest team in qualifying. I think you can make an argument for Kuwait. We'll get to that group later. And then I think North Korea, hands down, the unluckiest, like, 
God doesn't like North Korea. He's he's cursed them, quite frankly, because they should be in third or fourth right now. Mm, yeah, I would agree with that. But yeah, look, Iran and Uzbekistan are clearly going to qualify from this group, barring a historical meltdown of epic proportions. You said that as well that the third and fourth spot, that's going to be tasty. Because, you know, you still got a ticket to the World Cup there. Like, it's still up for grabs. But I look at Qatar, I'm like, these guys might be one of the biggest frauds in international football last 20 years. They are, they are horrendous. I mean, defensively, they are... Sh well, which goal was it? Not even like Kyrgyzstan goal. I think it was the second goal for Iran. Even the first goal, actually, oh. Osmo's header. I'm like, I'm like, what? Yeah, that How was do bad. You leave a wide open in that situation. Mendes, uh, I think UAE have kind of been competitive. I actually thought they played pretty well against Uzbekistan until they got the red card. I was like, okay, UAE are in this game. They're creating chances. So I would say UAE are a better team than Qatar right now. Qatar, if they don't have Akram Afif and Al Ali, they might be with Singapore level. I'm being dead honest. There's oh, they're 100 last without those two players mm. in this group. And if they did not have the easiest round two group ever assembled in Asian qualifying history, they probably would have been eliminated. We we would see, bro. We would see Afghanistan and Kuwait in round three if Almos Ali and Akram Afif were not Qatari. That's what we'd be looking yeah. at here. Yeah. We'd have Afghanistan probably. probably in sixth right now. Hey, you know, honest. I would have, I would have, I would, I, I would have been there for that, bro. Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, it would have been hype, but they would have gotten bodied. <laughs> oh, they would have got bodied, but at least we're there for the vibes. November is going to be wild. November is going to be wild. I, I cannot wait yeah. for Iraq and Jordan. Oh my god! And by the way, people, we, me and Jack are still trying to find a way to go next summer to the Jordan Iraq game when it's in Amman, Jordan, because that I, I honestly think. That's going to decide who goes to the World Cup, that game. And I think we're getting to that stage because South Korea, do they need Sun? Bro, I don't know if they need Sun or Lee Gang in I mean, he didn't do anything in this window. I was I was waiting for him. I thought I was going to see Akram Afif level chance creation from Lee Gang in and he, he didn't do it. And I think that's because the game plan was to take him out. Like Jesus Casas literally said, our game plan was to take out Lee Gang in because he's their best player. And I think mm -hmm. the plan worked too well. You focus too much on him. You forgot about everybody else, and you ate three goals. And that Iraqi defending, bro. Was like, oh no! Yeah, it was. It was. Clear it was pretty ball. horrendous. Let's clear the ball. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was pretty horrendous. But I gotta say, the South Korean players, the youngsters, Oi Soo-hin and uh, Oi Young-gui, man, they stepped up big time during this window. And I think that's a yeah. something that they need to take into account for the rest of this qualifiers. That South Korea's got the talent. Like they got youngsters playing in Europe, and they're balling out there. It's not just like, okay, okay, you got Son, you got Hwang Gi Chan, you got everybody else. But there's all these youngsters, whether it's at Gank or someone in the Eredivisie, they have so much talent in the attacking phase. Defensively, I'm still worried about them. I, I'm still not trusting that defense one bit. But South Korea seemed to not just be relying on the individual talent. Because we saw that under Jurgen Klinsmann. It was just all about individual talent. Individual talent is going to take us through. Now mm -hmm. I feel like there's a bit more of a tactical breakdown, a hard breakdown of these teams. And... Let's be honest here. They've had a tough, you know, first four games away to Oman, away to Jordan, and they got three wins. The only the only game they've dropped is Palestine at home, and they should have won that game at the end. That's the only one. So I think, yes. are you a little bit more positive now with South Korea after these four games? Dude, that's a fantastic question. I just filmed a collab yesterday with Albert Kim from Beaming Ballers. Shout out to them. And w the opening segment was a debate. Because I saw the Bean Bean Ballers guys being a little too dismissive of these results. And I came in, you know, as the outsider. And I was like, bro, you just did the double on Iraq and Jordan without Sun. And your other best player was completely average. Like, this is a big deal. Like, this is South Korea flexing their muscles and saying, no, we're still top dog. Like, that's cute that you guys are on the come up. Like, y'all are glowing up right now. That's fine. But don't forget, you know, who Papa is. That's still us. I thought it was massive for them. I think this was a great window for them. They got six points against Jordan and Iraq, the two competitors for the direct spots out of this group. One question I have to ask again is, I'm still thinking that Jordan are going to qualify over Iraq. That's why that game in November is massive. I think it's a must win for Iraq. 100%. I mean, I think the next game we have is also Jordan, Iraq, and Basra. I think that's match five coming up. So yeah. Iraq have done the bare minimum to be polite uh, this qualifying cycle so far. 
there's a real possibility where these guys end up on the same points, but Jordan's got what a plus 10 GD and Iraq's got plus two because they just don't score. I mean, I'm in Hussein and that's about it. He needs some help up there. Yeah. <laughs> he definitely needs some help, but yeah, without him, they would be looking at like maybe four or five points in this group. Maybe not even that. Maybe three, four points, and they would have like three draws. But Ayman Hussein, this guy is unstoppable. Ayman Hussein is an absolute monster. Now, I want to see more from Ali Jazim. Now, obviously, in a couple of games, he's come off yeah. the bench, and he got that great um, great dribbling for the uh, first goal for Iraq. But I just want to see a little bit more from him. We see the talent. He's got it. But I'm still banking on this. Jordan are going to qualify ahead of Iraq. I just think... Yes, Al Naimat is mm. unstoppable as well. He's what did I tell you last time? I said he's the best striker, and then you obviously rectified me and told me that Taremi is alive, <laughs> so he's second best striker. But Al Naimat is unbelievable. And you, if he started the game against South Korea, obviously he was injured. See, all one is basically Chris Bosch without Dwayne Wade and LeBron James. But when he's got LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. Then you see old one at his best. He just needs those two other guys, yeah. or at least one of them, to help him create and get that movement off the ball. And yeah, look, they, then they destroyed Oman, which is no easy feat either. What about Oman, Kuwait, and Palestine? I haven't been impressed by any three of them. I'm kind of a little bit disappointed in Palestine. I would expect a little bit better maybe defensively. Yeah, I have nothing to say about Oman because you won for nothing and then you lost for nothing. So let's just let's just call it a draw, right? Like I don't have any massive takeaways from them i thought they looked i mean they got ran over by jordan quite simply uh it's their new manager jaber it's his first window with the team so they were kind of fooling me in the first half thinking they might be back and then the jordan game happened and ali old one that's probably the best game i've ever seen from him for jordan in that game and uh yeah they came crashing back down to earth kuwait they're just not a good team man like they had a man up against Palestine. They had a man up against Iraq. They didn't win either game. I, I think they've had a very fortunate go of it so far. Haven't played South Korea yet. And they don't have much to show for it, really, at all. If not for a blasphemous penalty against Jordan, I mean, they're, they're last right now. And Palestine, yeah. I'm with you. They're actually probably the fourth best team in this group. They've just been a little unlucky. And they seem to leave it a little late in every game. It's like they start trying when they're already down 2-1 or when they're down one nothing, and they need to go chase the lead. I would like to see them be a bit more aggressive from the start. But are we asking too much? I mean, it's Palestine. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel bad yeah, being critical, but they have been unlucky and they have underperformed a little bit as opposed to the teams around them. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that with Palestine. One player, though, I got to say from Palestine, that bug. Please step up, bro. You're getting out benched against Kuwait. Really? Obviously, he came off the bench. I think it was like the 50th minute or 60th minute. But he's got to step up because he's like been their talisman for last three, four years. And there was so much talk about heading into the Asian Cup about Dabak. But he hasn't been really good in these qualifiers. But look, it's all coming down to next month between Iraq and Jordan. That game, oh, chef's kiss, people. Get your meal ready. Get the drinks ready for that. I don't, I don't need to say anything about Japan. They're, they're running away <laughs> with this group. And I don't, I don't need yeah. to be critical about them drop, dropping points against Australia because, and this is a great comment that you made on your watch along about the Japan and Australia game. It's not like the Iran game for Japan. They didn't look awful. It's only just like the, the final third and the final decision making that was terrible from Japan. Otherwise, you know, they just conceded. They've scored all their goals. That's it. Yes. <laughs> like they've, they've scored all the goals and they look defensively still solid. Just a little bit chance creation against Australia was missing, but overall, this team are still clicking on all gears. I just want to talk about six, second to sixth because all these guys, what do you say, to say about There's a lot to say. So let's start off with the soccer ruse. Okay. Popovich, I think he's a very good manager. He did amazing work with the Western Sydney Wanderers winning. They're still the only A League team to win a AFC Champions League. I think he's going to make them very defensively solid, keep them more organized. But it's going to be again and again the question, who the heck is going to get goals on this team? I guess it's got to be Craig Goodwin scoring from like 30 yards out. I don't know. Like, <laughs> this has been the problem for Australia, even going back to Graham Arnold. And this is where I felt like some of the Graham Arnold criticism was unfair because it's like, dude, they don't have any attacking pieces really in this team. What I thought was interesting is Popovich didn't play Urkunda at all against Japan. I thought that was interesting. And 
I actually thought it, it worked out for them because I don't know if Iracunda would have had the defensive work rate that, you know, like Riley McGree and, and Mitchell Duke have to preserve the draw in the end there. So I think Popovich, very impressive, not maybe not very impressive, but certainly impressive first window with Australia. But yeah, man, I mean, if Yankee, Duke, Goodwin, if those are the guys up top, Iracunda is 18 or whatever. It's going to be some, there's going to be some dry ball. Popovich that he benched Goodwin for the Japan game. I was like, wait, yeah, you're going to drop Goodwin. Okay. No, this guy's got cojones. Now, this is what you yeah. call cojones right here of a manager compared to another manager who doesn't really have any cojones, but he's got his bank full of money is Mancini. I mean, I, I think he's done. I, he has to be done at this point, Mancini. Uh, you cannot uh, lose into Japan at home. Okay, cool. You lose to Japan. It's fine. You can't score a goal against Bahrain. You're dropping points at home to Indonesia and Bahrain. He's the highest paid manager in the world. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. So you, if you're the highest paid manager in the world, and yes, look, I've been saying this for a while. This Saudi team is not good. This, they're not good. They don't have the quality up front. Midfield-wise, it's okay-ish. And then you have Salim al Dasari missing another. Oh, penalty. my gosh. I I, I yeah. told you the stat last time. His only competitive goal since the World Cup is against Tajikistan. That is it. He's got one goal since the World Cup. So you either have to bench him or then switch the manager. And now there's been reports that they might get Herb Renard. So how do we fix Saudi? Well, if they appoint Herb Renard, they will qualify for the World Cup. Not necessarily because I think they're going to finish in second but because afc qualifying dude just how the format is it's very forgiving it's very forgiving they have to be absolutely awful to get eliminated in round four i mean they're looking at a group that could could be like oman kyrgyzstan like if they don't make it out of that there's no saving saudi arabia but i think for starters like something mancini I don't understand why he doesn't start Radif up top because Al Burakan is just a, a piece of wood. Like he does absolutely nothing. Saudi Arabia were actually pretty fortunate in this Bahrain game. Their goalkeeper made two amazing saves, or they would have lost at home to Bahrain. There was one point in like the 90th minute, Bahrain has a counterattack. It's a three on one, and Ali yeah, Marhoun tries to be him and shoots and doesn't even get close to goal. He could have played his teammate through and Bahrain would have won the game again. So they got so lucky. I thought the lineup was abysmal. Musa Baljuer is by far their best midfielder and Mancini subbed him on in the 83rd minute. I, I, I don't understand. You're playing Bahrain. You know, they're going to park the bus. Like the guy doesn't, he, I feel like he still doesn't even know his own team. And how, how many games does he have in Saudi Arabia? 15? Yeah, he's been like there that, for yeah. a minute. It's inexcusable. He's he's cursing at the fans. He's been shite. Okay, so Simply do you would shite. you say then it's sixty is sixty percent Mancini's fault and forty percent that these players are just awful and they're not stepping up? Yeah, I, I would even I would even probably go seventy percent Mancini. Yeah, obviously, look, the lineup choices haven't been good. I think he's actually somewhat set the team up well. Like, they've created chances. Like, we can't say, oh, they've created zero goal-scoring chances. They're not even getting close to the back of the net. Like, they've created chances, mm -hmm. but these players, I think they just want to get him sacked. They want Ronaldo back. They want Daddy back at this point. They, they, want, the great, they want the great halftime speech that they got against Argentina back in their locker room because they're not playing like a team that are unified and playing for the manager. And, yeah, you saw, we all saw the video of Mancini cussing out. All the fans. Oh boy. At least trying yeah, to get a win. Yeah, they did get so a win. Dude. Oh my gosh. I that was hilarious because I thought something was too quiet. You know what I mean? Like the internet was too chill. I was like, no, something mm. wasn't there another game that happened this morning? Like, why am I why am I, I was checking my YouTube comments? I was like, no, nobody's coming in and saying I have zero ball knowledge for saying that China could draw. Uh and then I checked the score and saw that China won. And I was like, Honestly, it's a Christmas miracle. It's a Christmas miracle in October. It is, to me, I don't want to sound mean, but I think it's the humbling that Indonesia needed because these guys were getting out of pocket, dude. I was getting, I was getting comments saying they're going to finish second behind Japan. I was getting comments saying they're taking six points from this window. I was getting comments saying they were going to beat Saudi Arabia at home and Australia away, and they're going to draw Japan. 
just stop. First off, eyes on who's in front of you, which is the Chinese national team, a, a national team that everybody declared is finished. And you gave them their first win and honestly some life in this group. So thanks for that, Indonesia. Oh my and thanks and congratulations believe. to China because they, they yeah. deserve a win. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I the first half, they looked really good, China, against Indonesia. The second half, they just parked the bus. Uh, watching the game, they right. just parked that bus and got the win. So good for them. But I want to ask you, though, the game against Bahrain for Indonesia, do you think they kind of got screwed over by the ref in that instance? Not at all, Because, I bro. mean, there's been, Not... th there's been so much discussion about it, and I don't want to go in-depth because other people have done that. But I kind of feel bad for Indonesia. Like, if that happened to my nation, oh, I would be furious. I would be furious with that situation. But and the fact that Struik, Struik got his first goal for the for the national team, 17 appearances, and he finally got a goal. And then it's all washed away. But you have to be bet defensively, they haven't been good either. I don't think they got screwed over, dude. Like we've seen mm -hmm. hundreds of examples per year where the extra time goes further than what the referee said. Like it's simply if they score that final counterattack in extra time, they win the game yeah. three to one. And they don't because one Bahraini defender sticks his leg out behind him and blocks the pass. Honestly, that was the play of the game for Bahrain right there. Or just and, defend the corner better. Or just defend. I mean, that's all Indonesia does anyways. They don't attack under Shin Tae Yong when they're the smaller team. All they do is defend. Just do it one more time. And they couldn't do it. I'm sorry. I have no sympathy at all. No, Indonesia hasn't tried to play ball against the first three teams they played, really. And the defending on the straight goal, I mean, Bach Brain basically just said, hey, why don't you just go up? I mean, they literally just backed up. <laughs> I've never seen do, an entire nah, that unit, was a goal also, though. Yeah, from right inside the box. I mean, the, they were trying to do a, a, an offside trap from inside their own box. I've never seen anything I, like it. I still think that was a goal also, though, from Stroik. I got to give it to him. Well, I our sneaky team. You know, they don't. They're not flashy. They don't got the sexy names. Obviously, Marhun is a, is a baller, in my opinion. But they don't got the flashy names. But they're just going to be that tough team. They are exactly. They got the same exact flag color as this nation. They are Tunisia. They are exactly Correct. Tunisia. And they're going to... Don't be surprised, people, if they get maybe third or fourth in this group. Don't be surprised. They will be third or fourth. Dude, these guys, they don't want to play ball. They're like the anti-football <laughs> no, team. But, but it works. Mm. It works. I mean, even I'm thinking of like even the games they lost. The only time I really saw them got get eviscerated was when Japan beat them five nothing. But even at the Asian Cup, like Japan was struggling at times, and there was a moment there when it was two one, where it was like, oh my god, is Bahrain actually going to equalize against Japan here? They're annoying, and they're very well coached and organized, and that is going to make it tough when they play the bigger teams because they're very competent at parking the bus and when they have to be the better team i mean they still got madan and marku and they got some guys who can make something happen offensively and they can still punish you on the counter attack watching bahrain is just it's just awful but you their need, fans you need won't 10 liters of you need 10 liters of coffee to watch a bahrain game at this point bro i mean honestly yes. it is it is very sickening, but it doesn't matter. They're eventually going to qualify for the World Cup, and they were very close in 2006 and 2010. Who knows? Maybe this is the year. They did, qualify, they did top their group at the Asian Cup, so these guys are no joke. It's not great yeah. to watch, but they're just going to get the job done, and that's the most important thing. But everybody, we got we to gotta wrap up here. We're obviously going to jump on to Dead Ball TV and talk about biggest winners and losers of this window for the Asian World Cup qualifiers. Get your thoughts in the comments down below. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. We will be having a better video in November, people. Don't worry about that. I will also be previewing the window because I might just do a whole video on Iran, Iraq and uh, Jordan game because I'm so hyped. I am so hyped for it. I'm so hyped for it. But everybody, have a beautiful day. Stay safe in this crazy world. Till next time. Adios.